So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. Well, today I'm going to show you how I caught those tardigrades, they are called, and how I put them under the microscope. It's been raining for a few days now, and there's a lot of moss growing outside of my apartment. Uh, here it is, and this is the place where those tardigrades like to live and thrive. So I'm going to show you how I not only collected the moss, but how I also caught those tardigrades uh, to put under the microscope. It's actually not that difficult. Tardigrades are animals. Uh, they have eight legs, as a matter of fact, uh, and of course they're microscopic. Um, and if you look very carefully, then you can see even that those uh, tardigrades, they have tiny microscopic uh, claws that they use to cling uh, to the leaves of the moss. And I'm going to show you actually later a close-up um, of this. Yeah, there is moss growing all over the place um, and I chose to collect uh, some moss uh, from this rock over there. Now if uh, you are living in a slightly more drier region and if the moss uh, that you find is a little bit dry then I recommend that you still collect the moss and that you place it into a little bit of water for a few days because this actually causes the tardigrades uh, to, yeah, to revitalize and uh, come back to life again. This here actually shows a tardigrade in so-called dark field microscopy. It's called dark field because the tardigrade appears now bright on a dark background. And in the corner, if you look carefully, I've always uh, mentioned which type of microscopic technique I've used uh, to take a film and make a video of these tardigrades. Now, I've collected uh, samples from several different uh, locations. Um, and when you look carefully, you can see that the moss uh, not always looks the same. Some moss is a little bit more green, others is a little Bit more brownish. So what I've, what I've done is, is to sh make sure that I find enough of these tardigrades. I collected different types of moss and then I basically I was hoping for the best and as a matter of fact I was very lucky and I've always when I tried to put uh, the moss under the microscope I found at least two or three of these tardigrades so there were plenty of them in, in my samples. Now diff depending on the type uh, of uh, microscopy that you're using of course uh, you can also see different organs um, of uh, the tardigrade um, and uh, of course also the, diff the claws sometimes are better visible in one technique and in the other. So I encourage you that you try out and experiment a little bit. The tardigrades generally had a little problem moving along on the microscope slide because it's so smooth so the claws really couldn't cling to anything. Um, so usually they had a big problems moving forward and they sometimes were slipping around and they were turning to the side and flipping to the side because they couldn't cling to anything solid. Um, but as soon as they found something solid they immediately clung to it and didn't uh, want to let go. So quite uh, fascinating uh, to observe. You might also wonder now what do they eat? Well they eat eat bacteria and other small cellular material and also some of them I read even eat other tardigrades so they're cannibals even. Um, you find everything in nature. Well in a moss sample uh, you can of course not only find tardigrades but many other water organisms. For example this here is a ciliate going around in a circle. It's only made of one cell and this here is a multicellular organism. It's called a rotifer. Yeah pretty much almost the same size, maybe a little bit larger, and yet another ciliate. So you can see that the biodiversity in a moss sample is quite large as well. But one of the things that I really liked finding and uh, was a little bit surprised that I found it are not those ciliates here. I expected them a little bit, uh, but as a matter of fact, this skin of a tardigrade, because what tardigrades do is when they grow is they molt. So they shed off their skin and that seems to be one of those empty skins. Um, and and out comes um, the tardigrade slightly larger. So every time when the skin becomes too tight, they start to cast it off uh, and this way they grow. And I was quite lucky that to find actually such a, an empty skin there. Well, back at home, I added a little bit of, of water uh, to the moss to keep it moist. And this also kind of flushed out some of the tardigrades into the water. So you can take some of this water and put it under the microscope uh, as well. Now this here is uh, again, a very uh, highly magnified image and if you look very carefully you can you might be actually able to see the claws of the tardigrade a little bit and it also shows here that uh, the tardigrade is a little bit transparent but you do see some of the surface colors as well um, and uh, what I've uh, seen is, is that different tar tardigrades actually have also a different uh, coloring. So 
I think that this is a very um, encouraging and, and uh, nice little experiment to, to actually go out to find those but you do have to be patient a little bit um, because uh, I've tried this already before and I had some problems finding them and I think the reason is indeed that it has to be uh, the weather has to be right uh, it has to be quite moist and again as I mentioned uh, if you cannot find any don't despair but keep the moss moist for a few days and then they actually might reappear so this is how I collected them I took a some of those um, moss sample and I simply tapped it on a microscope slide with a drop of water and then I added the cover glass uh, the cover slip and uh, you find a lot of things uh, there and of course if you're lucky also some of those moss piglets or tardigrades um, so it's a very easy and also very rewarding thing to try out yeah again here uh, one of them that I found um, and uh, the other thing is something I did not mention you might have already heard of tardigrades because they even have been in space before uh, some years ago they actually sent them up uh, with, with uh, I think on the space shuttle even um, because they were doing experiments with those because they have a very yeah they're very resistant and resilient so they can survive very cold temperatures even hot temperatures they can also survive dry periods as well now how big is one of those tardigrades look I placed next to the slide I placed a needle and uh, I put everything under my stereo microscope and then I zoomed zoomed in because I want to compare now the tip of the needle with the size of a tardigrade and look what I'm doing on the right side you see the needle um, and now I'm going to to zoom in and we're going to see if you look in the center the small dot in the center that actually is the tardigrade I have to focus back and forth a little bit because I cannot have both the tip of the needle which is slightly above and the tardigrade on the same same focus at the same time so only one of those two can be in focus at the same time that's why I'm focusing back and forth but you should be able to see that a tardigrade is small enough that it actually would fit on the tip of a needle but there are larger ones as well um, because there are what I read is around a hundred different type of tardigrade species and that's, that's quite a lot and some of them are significantly larger as well um, but I think um, you get the idea that many of them are actually quite uh, quite tiny so I would use, like to use this time now to of course thank my patron supporters uh, there is a list uh, of all of those uh, of you who are supporting me I would like to thank you very much uh, for your support if you are interested yourself in amateur microscopy there are plenty of resources and links that I included down in the description um, among other things also links uh, to my Amazon affiliate web shop where you can buy microscope and uh, accessories um, I also have a second YouTube channel which is microscopy related uh, which is a little bit more theoretical where I do product reviews you might also be interested in that please also visit that do consider subscribing if you're interested in, in videos like this yeah and I think I'm just gonna leave it at that uh, I wish you all the best happy microbe hunting as always do subscribe to the channel if you like it check out my other videos happy microbe hunting I think I already said that see you around next time bye bye